Yes, yes, welcome to another video, guys. We got the job done. We got a 1-0 win there against Atletico Madrid. First leg of the, the Champions League quarterfinal there. It wasn't pretty, was it? Jeez, man, that game was painful. Uh, before we get into it, guys, massive shout-out to Bet Victory to sponsor today's video. Check, take a look at this quick clip. Ronaldo's the biggest flop of the season because... The disgrace. No, 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 but look, and this, but this is the problem with Man United. They can't even recognise out what he's done because he scored goals and he is the top goal scorer. Too busy jumping around in the car park shouting Sue to realise that he's totally brought down Man United Football Club. Uh, one transfer is trying to completely undermine everything. So, to be honest, bro, I have to agree. I think it's Ronaldo. I think Ronaldo's a flop of the season. I think he's a, uh, you know, just uh, just because it's funny, isn't it? You know what I mean? They signed him. They thought they were going to win the league. They, you know, I've seen people thought they were going to win the Champs League and they're battling for seventh you know what i mean it's just it's just funny it is it is a funny situation uh i fully i fully believe that if he would have come to city he would have had a miles better season than what he's had at united yeah. and i think to be fair i could probably go with i think united would have had a better season if he wouldn't have gone there either because i feel like he he took all the all the attention he's main man now do you know what i mean and he couldn't address the real issues yeah no, absolutely guys that full video is available for you click the link in the description go check it out it's quite funny um <laughs> right let's get into it then bro that game i mean jeez oh mean, my god we we, we all know didn't we? we all knew going into this game that Atletico Madrid, we all knew how Atletico Madrid had played, you know what I mean? But my days, they took it to the extreme. I was dead. I mean, I know I know. in our preview we said like the defensive football and that. Can I say, right, Pep in his press conference was definitely chatting shit when he said that, nah, they don't play defensive. They, they, <laughs> they just have a different way of attacking football. Yeah, nah, mate, nah. they play defensive. They go, you're, you're on FIFA, you have ultra defensive. They've got, then you've got Atletico Madrid, the one next to that. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, I, tactics. yeah, I never say anything like it. I thought it was yeah. bad when we, when we were playing Tuchel and that, like, because they played defensive football, like, I mean, counter attacking ball. I thought that was bad. This was, this was a different extreme. Mm. And, I could be, it, it was very clear that it, the, all they wanted was to try and counter us, which obviously is their tactic, but they weren't even trying that. It was like, they get the ball, and it was like, hoof it up, but they've actually got no players up there anyway, because they're not actually that arsed. Yeah. Until, until we scored, and then they opened up a bit and tried to actually go for it a little bit. Yeah, I just, you know, it's one of them. On one hand, I understand, they don't want to come to Manchester, play open attacking football, yeah, get and banned. get smacked free yeah. now, yeah, but... There's got to be a balance, lads. I mean, come on, all your fans have just travelled over from Spain spending their hard-earned cash, you know what I mean, watching that. I mean, it was embarrassing. And the one of the problems that we've got here, and not us as City fans, but like as a football as a football fan, is that like he'll be happy with that, I think. I think that Atletico Madrid will, will take that result. Their main objective, Atletico Madrid today, was to come to this game and get out still with a chance in the second leg. They still have a chance. They're 1-0 down. They'll be happy with that. That's kind of sad, but it's true. They they will be happy with that. They'll think, job done. We'll go back to our place now. And if we win the game, we will at least take it to extra time. So... Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll back themselves at home, innit? It's they'll, they'll say it's, it's just awful. It's just not pretty to watch. And... You said it perfectly in the stream. It's all right if you if you win things doing that tactic. Like Tuchel, Chelsea fans can get behind it. Okay, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? We won the Champions League with that. Do you know what I mean? He's won something with that. With them now, it's like when you're not winning the games, it's pain. It's pure pain. It's not good to watch, innit? It's not good to watch at all. But when when if they were to turn it around and then beat us, no, no, none of them will care about how he's played the football. Mm. It's about how he got the job done situation. I feel sorry for our players as well, man, because like it was I know people that. getting frustrated at Peter, like fans getting frustrated at our players, but you've got to you know, and I get it during the game, but you've got to really sit back after the game and go, well, what more could they have done? Sterling got the ball on the left hand side. He's marked by about three different players. Mares the same, you know what I mean? Bernardo Silva completely isolated when he receives the ball. And it gets to a point where you go, well, they're not doing much, but what else can they do? They've got literally 11 players sat on the edge of the penalty area who are good players. Let's not, let's not get it wrong. They're, they're, they're good players. And it's just really, really difficult to create. Well, you know, it, it gets to the point where players like Kevin De Bruyne, they need to step up. And Kevin De Bruyne, I felt, did did step up and he led the team in, in, in a good way. He remained calm throughout the match. Obviously, you need someone to finish it and Phil Foden created that. And we'll talk about that in, in, in a moment. But I thought with Kevin De Bruyne today, it wasn't one of his best games. But what I thought I saw from him was I saw composure. Yeah, I mean, I saw composure from Kevin De Bruyne today. Um, when he had when he had the ball, he was he was trying to make things happen. But he he knew Kevin. 
He knew, Kevin, that they get the tie was not going to be won and lost today. This game will go on through the whole 180 minutes, across the whole tie, maybe into extra time if it gets there in the next leg. And the main thing for him today was just to ensure that he did nothing stupid, that the team did nothing stupid, and that we got out of the game, hopefully with a result, but if not, we didn't do anything daft, you know what I mean? Because we've done stuff daft in the past, guys. You remember Leeds last year? Daft. You remember Tottenham this year, a couple of weeks ago? Daft stuff, you know what I mean? And I think Kevin today, I think he used his brain and obviously got a, got a brilliant goal, you know, with, with a great finish. Yeah. Uh, the thing is with Kev, we, we say this a lot, and I'm just going to say it again anyway, innit? Because you can all hear it again. Um, he doesn't have to have the best of games to yeah. to be important or crucial do you know what I mean? Kev came away with man of the match in that game. He didn't have the best games. That's not, that's not, I mean, I'm not looking at that going, oh, that's one of Kev's best games ever played. We got man of the match because he's there at the important time to get the goal. Mm. And that's the thing with Kev. If he's out of form and that, you've still got to put him in the team because he's the guy that's going to pop up. And this is why in our preview, we said we wanted him to play the false nine role mm. to push him further up the pitch mm. to pretty much to get him in the exact position where he scored the goal from. Like the, them exact positions, we need him right there because he's the one that'll put the ball in the back of the net who you can back. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can say that other people will score. Do you know what I mean? They do get goals. You know I mean, Raheem Sterling, he's got better goals this season. Do you know what I mean? Maris has got better goals this season. But if there's one man that you can rely on to be crucial, like, to, to be clinical, when you get one chance... It's Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. So that's why that's why he's there. And do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It, it, it came, he came up at the important time. And he's the reason, well, him and Ford and linking up, he's the reason that uh, we take we yeah, can wait well, with the win. Let's talk about the substitutions, obviously. It wasn't all going our way. Pep rolled the dice. He threw on Phil Foden, uh, Jack Grealish and uh, Gabby Jesus. Yeah. And, and Phil Foden, you know, spoke about this during the live watch along that we did, but... What he did was something that Bernardo Silva and Gundogan weren't doing. He was he 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 received the ball in that little pocket just behind the just behind the midfield, but in front of their defence. But instead of giving the ball straight back to Rodri, which Bernardo Silva and Gundogan were doing a hell of a lot today, he got on the ball. He was brave. He was courageous. He had the talent to turn and run at the defence, and that was the first time he received the ball in that pocket. He turned on the ball, something that Bernardo Silva and Gundogan didn't do, and he fed in um, Kevin De Bruyne, who knew that he was going to feed him in. And obviously, as we spoke about then, Kevin De Bruyne put the ball in the back of the net. But Bill Foden now is becoming a player that... We're starting to think, you know, he's crucial to this team, and it's been a it's been a brilliant, br- brilliant viewing experience for the city fans over the last sort of four or five years of of his career developing, just coming in, in and out of the team, getting eight or nine matches a season or whatever it was, and then first couple of years under Pep Guardiola, a lot of pressure on him and on Pep with outside media sources saying that he needs to leave, go on loan, or he's going to sit on the bench for the next five years or whatever. <laughs> And that's not happened. And it's been such an amazing sort of experience as a fan to see this kid develop from our academy into a player where we're throwing him on with 15, 20 minutes to go. And we're saying, you know what, mate? You can be the difference. You can be the difference. And he was the difference. Like I say, he got the ball in that space, turned, ran at the players with confidence, with skill, and a brilliant pass to Kevin who slotted home. Yeah, and... I think a massive part about that, boy, is the fact that how confident he is. He's a that you can tell. You know what I mean, he's absolutely loving it, Phil Ford. He loves it. He loves the all this pressure and that. It just doesn't get to him at all. It doesn't phase him. Guy comes on the pitch, in Atletico, a massive game where we can't get a goal. And his first thing to do when he gets the ball isn't turn back and make an easy pass backwards like everyone else has been doing. He's, he he wants to change the game. He wants to make the difference and be the difference. So he turns on the ball. Do you know what I mean? The, I think Gundogan Bernardo because they, they they must have thought that. The, the athletic players, do you know what I mean? Right behind them. They don't want to turn on the ball, lose it to a counter attack. Do you know what I mean? And then, then Pep's fuming. Phil Foden, nah, he was like, I'm going to turn the ball, I'm going to do him, innit? I'm going to turn the ball, I'm going to make something happen. And that's exactly yeah. what he did. He was sick. He was sick. He did make the difference. What you have to do, bro, in them positions, you, you can't have your back to goal. Because if you have the back to goal, you don't know where the player is behind you. And then yeah. if you turn, you're going to get murked. What Phil did, he sort of received the ball. He with, opened up his, his body, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, with his body sort of half turned. So. He could make that turn easier, you know what I mean? And I just think that's something that we lacked with Gundogan and Bernardo Silva today. I think they, they were a little bit too, sort of, you know, they're the back to goal too much. And, and as a result, they never really were able to spin on it. And Phil Foden did that as soon as he came on the pitch. And, you know, we, we looked like we could have scored two or three more yeah, after them yeah. substitutes were made. So, fair play to Pep Guardiola. He made the changes. He, the changes were spot on. And fair play to the players, I thought. 
Jesus didn't do too much when he come on, but he did run around and make himself a nuisance. And Jack Grealish, wow, he just wound up every single Athletic Club Madrid player <laughs> on the single pitch. So I expected red cards by the end, you know. Yeah, it, it was it was kind of mad, but fair play to them. Uh, let's have a look at the player ratings. Then these are decided by our extra club members, guys. So if you look at these player ratings and go, oh, how do I how do I get involved? All you have to do is become an extra club member. The link is at the description. You also get your name at the bottom of the screen, like these goats here. Um, so let's take a look then. So Edison didn't have too much to do, really, did he? He got a 7.3. Cancelo, 7.3. John Stones, Laporte and Ake. Good scores all round, really. 7.5, 7.2. And Ake, I thought, was absolutely superb today. He got an 8.9. What do you think of Ake today? Bro, bro, bro Ake could have had his own segment in this yeah, review because of how good he was. He, and he's played left back. And that's something that we didn't really want when we did our preview because like, we've not seen it much this year. But he looked comfortable. Honestly, mm. he was completely fine with being left back and every aerial ball, he was getting his head to it. It was yeah. unreal. He was incredible. Yeah, no, he really, really was. Um, Rodri in the middle of the park, I guess a 7.5. I thought he was decent, Rodri. I thought he yeah, controlled yeah. the game well, made a couple good interceptions and, and tackles as well and, you know, trying to dictate the play. And again, it's not easy for him because he gets the ball on, the, you know, 35 yards out, you know, Kevin's mad. You know, <laughs> There's an Gundogan ocean of mad. Atletico players in front of him. Yeah, and I thought, you know, he did really what he could have done and he kept on feeding them balls through to, to, to the players like Gundogan and, and Bernardo, and especially in the first half, but the ball, unfortunately, just kept on coming back to him. Um, De Bruyne gets a brilliant score, as you would expect there, with an 8.6. And then um, 6.6 for Gundogan and then 6.8 all round for the front through start of the game. And to be honest, I don't think that's a reflection on their performances. I just think it was extremely, extremely hard and obviously, they're playing against Atletico when they had fresh defenders and fresh midfielders on the pitch. So, there were very little they could do. But it's the subs today, bro, that make the difference. This is subs. Phil Fordham with a, with a 9.5. Grealish with a 7.8. And Gabby with a 6.7. Gabby found it difficult when he came on just because, like I say, the amount of defenders that are in the box and that. But um, Grealish, like I say, he made his differences and Foden changed the game. Foden unlocked Atletico Madrid's defence. And um, that's what takes us into the next leg with a 1-0 lead. Yeah, and Phil Foden, of course, getting the extra club man of the match yeah, there as well. Man of the match. 5. And that's, that's obviously rare. I think it's only happened second once time, no, second, Yeah, it was Mahrez yeah, last um, time, wasn't it? So, yeah, look, Phil Foden changed the game today. Fair play to Pep getting getting the tactics uh, spot on there with the substitutions at the end. We gets an 8.7. The referee gets a 2.4. Guys, of course, let us know your thoughts. How do you think this sets us up for the second leg? And, of course, we've got Liverpool coming up on Sunday. I was thinking before, bro, about how much energy we used today. I think we actually used a lot more than I thought we were going to do. Um, and obviously Liverpool did play away they got a win today at Benfica so it's going to it set us up for a nice game on Sunday anyway um, no, no. guys let us know your thoughts in the comment section below if you want to go check out that video that Bet Victor have done talking about who's been the flop of the season the, the worst signing of the season go check it out we'll, we'll link that in the description my, my vote of course is for Ronaldo just because it's funny <laughs> um, guys it's a madness we got the win it wasn't easy in the end but uh, yeah we, we, we move on uh, one out of four and uh, yeah, see what this uh, two weeks has in store for us. Guys, we'll see you in the next one. See you later.